Hello everybody from Nomade family and uh, welcome to this Through the Lens of Design on you know the global times that we are going through right now. Um, you know human design is something that has always been of interest to the Nomade family at large actually and specifically obviously to uh, my dear friend Antonio or you know people in the management team and um, today I want to basically let you know that from a human design perspective there's always been something that was a course that was called Global Cycles and in this course on Global Cycles the founder of human design Rao Ruhu was explaining how basically life on earth takes place on a stage. So this is actually you know, a phrase that comes from Shakespeare, you know, like life is taking place on a stage. And this stage of life changes every 412 years. And right now we are seven years away exactly to the, the moment of change of stage. So basically you have to imagine that you know life is taking place uh, somewhere in a bar and everybody's enjoying the drinks and the music and hanging out and being very jolly and you know very close to each other also actually and then all of a sudden you know the, the, the story of life just goes on but we're changing the scenery, the decor of the play. And the decor all of a sudden changes towards, you know, we're all walking through the desert right now. And if the, that decor changes in that sense, obviously in the end it's going to impact, you know, the individuals or the, the, the way the story plays out and all that kind of stuff. But human design has always been here for basically two things at the same time. It's been here as a signpost, a map, an information on how the intelligence of Mother Earth is anchored within each individual and how each individual can use Mother Nature's intelligence inside of her or him in order to, you know, make decisions in their lives. So, for example, I am a reflector type. That's, you know, basically the way they describe the energy mechanics of somebody like me. And my decisions are taken, you know, relying on a lot of time. There's people who are generators, for example. BB is a generator and BB is a generator that is here to rely on her sacral. So, you know, basically for her, it's all about what does her gut response say in the moment because that's the way that Mother Nature is anchored with her intelligence inside of this individual that we all know. Now, the other aspect of human design has to do with all the different elements of all the different energetic aspects of life and when it comes to describing this this scenery or this decor of life that is changing right now it basically human design is pointing this out towards us for us not to get too identified with all of that you know it's basically you stay you the, the, the decor is changing and that's interesting to know. So when we talk in human design about this decor that is changing, we're looking at the G center. This is the G center right here in the middle. And the G center has two big incarnation themes. It's called the Sphinx and the Vessel of Love. And these gates, you find them within the wheel of design. Sorry. You find them within the wheel of design. And because of the precession of the equinox, every 412 years, to be exact, there is a different theme that starts to play out on the decor of life. 
So we get to see, for example, that this theme over here, which has to do with the spring equinox and basically is what we call universal love. So what everybody appreciates, what everybody loves for the last 412 years, that has been the theme of family and community over here. Okay. And this theme of family of co or, and community over the last 412 years has brought about that we created closer and closer and closer and tighter communities. So we have, you know, the European Union, the international community, the UN, uh, you know, we have corporate banking systems, everything is linked. We have the global village. I mean, I can reach out to all of you basically from my studio here. So there is all kinds of, you know, for the, for the last 412 years, beginning closer and closer and closer and tighter to each other in a network that gave us one thing mainly support. So this network of support is now basically in its last stage, the last seven years of it, and it's moving towards something that has everything to do with our individual emotional spirit, with our possibility inside of ourselves of basically having a sense of emotional abundance and spirit towards life. But that is not about support any longer. That's a very individual theme. So all these support structures, however you see them in your personal life, whether they go from the nuclear family to the big, large, you know, or corporations or institutions or like the English right now who are already back on their island, or whether it has to do with the banking system and all that kind of stuff, all these support structures are starting to crumble down, you know, and we are now in some way or another, life is giving us a heads up. You know, this is just the beginning. This is like, you know, the appetizer before the meal that is coming. Well, actually, basically within this and seven years. So we're slowly, slowly moving into a period where these support structures start, start making place for an individual awakening of our emotional spirit. And for example, this gate over here in the G center, the second gate, which has been driving the stage, that has been the, the driving motor behind the decor of life, that gate over here, you find it over here, that gate has been for 412 years in a theme that had to do with expansion. So the driving motor over the last 412 years has been an expansion of consciousness, actually, an expansion of intelligence. So something has been driving this decor that was saying, yeah, more, yeah, we can go further. Yeah, there's always growth has been always the driving force over the last 412 years. If you read books that are incredibly in like, interesting from people like you know, Juval Harari, for example, this historian, uh, he's pointing out, for example, how people have been so used and accustomed to growth that they actually think it is something natural, but it ain't. It's only, even historically, it's only been there for a certain amount of time. Now, obviously, we have a structure and we have an economy that is based on that principle of growth, but this principle of growth is making place for this theme over here, which is the theme of the 51st gate, and the 51st gate is, a, is going to replace that motor. And, this new motor of the 51st gate is basically a motor that says, are you able to adapt to shock? So we're getting 412 years from now on where we're going to be dealing with a motor that drives the stage and that says, hey, here, deal with that. And here, deal with that. Now, obviously, you know, we have a global pandemic going on, which is pr pretty shocking and it affects everybody's, you know, freedom of movement and all that kind of stuff. But 
From a design perspective, this is just a first indication that we are moving into this new era for 412 years where everything is going to be moved by shock. Now, you know, we're all aware enough to know that there is climatological shocks waiting for us and that there is actually shocks waiting for us that, you know, many people aren't even aware of what the, like, what the impact of it could be. One of them that human design has been pointing out is, you know, that there is basically a decline going on in our fertility. Now, there's certain research, you know, circulating on the internet that says like, mm, you know, maybe this uh, COVID-19 can something can have an impact on male fertility. So, you know, all the elements are actually already somehow in the air. Hmm? We also get to see, for example, this gate over here is being the limited perspective. Limited perspective basically means how do we look at life, you know? And this limited perspective has been for the last 412 years in this gate over here that has to do with looking at the inner core and inner working, the inner truth of things. So we've had 412 years where we, became, where we came so in like where we gathered such an in-depth knowledge about the intrinsic workings of life through genetics, of you know, physics, through all kinds of stuff, chemistry. You know, we went really, really deep in understanding the inner truth about life, and which is actually incredibly in important for our, you know, for our survival in some way or another, especially if our fertility is breaking down. And we see that this is making place for this gate over here. And this gate over here, the 54th gate, has to do with, you know, from now on we have to start learning to look at how we take life in through a perspective that says, yes, okay, but from now on we have to see if this is actually good for the benefit of everybody's you know material transformation so we have to start paying much more attention than we did in the last 412 years on a theme that has to do with greed you know we can't be so greedy any longer we have to start seeing whether this is all there for the unif like for everybody's well-being has to be supported through the movement that we are making in this shift of decor we also get to see for example that you know this here the tent gate the tent gate comes from here and this has to do with what you know what it, what we personally the tent gate is the gate of individual behavior so the individual behavior that has been you know appreciated over the last 412 years is an individual behavior that was pointed towards being able to be really determined and going into detail and that's now making place for something that says well you know you have to be strong in your own intelligence in your own inner authority which is what human design provides and like this there are many different aspects to that okay but just to make it clear is that we are going through times where what is called in human design the cross of planning the cross of planning is this, this, this globalization, this everything together, these support mechanisms. They are making place for something that is called the cross of the sleeping phoenix. So there, we're moving into an era where there is a, a, a huge potential for individual awakening in some ways or another but there is also that comes together with being able to rely on one's own individual intelligence strength and positioning so these times right now are incredibly important in terms of knowing how to make decisions from one's own intelligence now knowing how to stand in the intelligence of mother nature within us we are moving in times now where 
you know, the changes go really deep in, in our basically, you know, awakening of, in, of emotional spirit, which is uh, something that basically is going to slowly, slowly start making place for the arrival of more awareness on the planet, but not necessarily without a certain amount of disarray. Because when all of these structures of support start crumbling down, there is, there is something that's, that shows us how deeply people are um, identified with the security that they laid outside of them. And we are moving in an era where the security has to be inside of oneself. So all of these things, obviously, they can be further addressed through you know, human design consultancies or analysis or you know, all kinds of possibilities that you can obviously you know, find on my website, for example, or they're just out there. And Susanna has also been asking me to, um, yeah, what can we do in all of this? And for the last two years, I've been working with Ra Urhu's first student in human design, who is an international individualized, individual health practitioner. His name is Dr. Martin Grassinger. And together we've been working on a, an, an individual approach to heightening one's immune system's intelligence according to one's individuality. So also there, on my website, there is a page called Health and Human Design. You know, you can, you can reach out there and we can set up one-on-one -on -one private free consultations on how to basically get access to something that has to do with strengthening the immune system according to one's individuality. Because if the individuality is correct and strong, then we are protected towards whatever is homogenized, whatever is out there and basically affecting everybody is something that can't get in if the individuality is strong. So, you know, there's all kinds of things that, you know, we try to make available to you guys so that, you know, you're able to go through these times with a little bit of cheerfulness, security inside and uh, a good feeling in your hearts. So, thanks for watching. Please reach out and till next time. Bye-bye.